guys, if any of this pandemic stuff has scared you from unwanted and unneeded public appearances, then this next company is gonna be for you. On this week's episode of Is It A Buy, we're gonna be looking over the company Teladoc, a company that allows people who need to see a doctor in the middle of the night or people that don't wanna take any unnecessary risks sitting in a waiting room especially during a pandemic. With this app, you can now see registered and licensed local doctors from the comfort of your own home. And considering the times, I think that is a great service to have in your back pocket, especially if you live with at-risk people. So if any of that interests you at all, let's get into it. Welcome back everybody, or if you're new here, my name is Sean Lucas, and I usually make videos over companies that are in the news, have new tech and other products coming out, or just companies that spike my interest. And like I said in the intro, today's video is going to be over Teladoc, or ticker symbol T-D-O-C. For some reason, I had struggled, I, I struggled to get that out. And we're going to briefly be going to be covering a few things, uh, definitely not limited to. We're going to be looking at the company's background, we're going to be looking at a few of their services, we're going to be looking at what it looks like on a chart, we're going to be looking at uh, a few of the financials, and we're going to wrap up with a statement on whether or not I think Teladoc is a buy in my eyes. Obviously not yours, because you should consult a financial advisor. <laughs> but before we get into that, guys, uh, if you haven't already, uh, please check out Andrew Lopez's finance channel because he helped me out in a big way in my paperclip trading up video. Uh, he actually stepped up when my my the, my listing on the Facebook marketplace wasn't getting any more traction. Nobody was. I ran out of reposts and renews and whatever. But he he stepped up in a big way and helped me out. So if you guys haven't checked it out, and I know we have similar audiences, so on the off chance that some of my subscribers haven't seen him, go ahead, check him out, uh, and show him some love because he really helped the, helped me uh, uh, keep going with my, you know, with my paperclip trading up series. So, so now that we got that out of the way, let's really get into it. So right off the rip, Teladoc was founded in 2002 in Dallas, Texas by Michael Gorton and Byron Brooks. Teladoc's initial business model allowed patients to remotely consult with state licensed doctors at any time. Companies paid a monthly fee for their employees to access the service, while well, the patients paid a flat fee for each consult, originally about $35 to $40. In 2011, the healthcare giant Aetna began allowing the service to some of their fully insured members to two states, Florida and Texas. And soon after realizing how awesome this application and service is, quickly allowed all 50 states. I assume the holdup was licensing and approval issues. Between the years of 2009 to 2014, Teladoc got up to completing 120,000 uh, consults in a year, raising up to $15 million in September of 2013. And because of the Affordable Cares Act, this led to many insurance companies to sign with Teladoc, which I can only assume was to save as much money as possible, which I guess is what makes it affordable in the first place. In the year of 2014, Teladoc started reaching record highs for the, for the company, uh, seeing and consulting with over 299,000 uh, clients or patients. This meant that their sales were also at all-time highs and bringing the funding at this time to over a hundred million dollars. Between the years of 2015 and 2016, some major things happened for Teladoc, including the acquisition of BetterHelp in 2015 for three and a half million dollars and Stat Health Services in 2015 for about 30 million dollars. They also went public on July 1st, 2015 for about 19 dollars a share. This gave the company a market capitalization of $758 million and an enterprise value of $620 million. Enterprise value is a measure of a company's total value, often used as a more comprehensive alternative to equity market capitalization. Enterprise value includes its own calculation of the market capitalization of a company, but also short-term and long-term debt, as well as any cash on the company's balance sheet. Don't worry, I had to look it up too. In the years between 2017 to 2020, it was much of the same. It was growing and acquiring. They acquired Better Doctors, In Touch Health, and Livongo, which is why I got turned on to Teladoc in the first place. Okay, so now moving on to what their services look like. Well, Teladoc alone, the ways they can help out is as follows. Everyday care, mental health, dermatology, nutrition, medical experts, caregiver, and of course, STD testing. And that is just the Teladoc side. They also have other brands like Advanced Medical, Better Doctors, Better Help, and 
healthiest you. All right, guys, now we're gonna take a look on the chart and see how it looks. So moving into Teladoc. Uh, so looking at this chart, it's a five-year weekly chart. And as we can see, the price of the stock didn't start boogieing until the year of 2020. And I wonder why that is. I really don't. The price control for this chart in the stock is roughly, uh, it's like 34.39, which means it's about, mm, let's say 86% lower than the all-time highs, which was 253. Looking at the volume, uh, looking at the volume profile, you can obviously see some bars on the left. Uh, during this range of about 50, 50, uh, 50 and a half dollars to, let's say this is the top, 80, 88 dollars, okay? So that range. It, the range is pretty big, not gonna lie. As you can see, this pocket right here, it moved, the stock has moved into a pocket and the bars get bigger, which means it was moving quickly during this time. And you can tell that it was moving and, and moving quickly because the extra volume here on the uh, horizontal axis, look at those bars right here. However, it started to slow down, right, you know, a little bit right here where it's kind of forming a new volume, volume shelf and it's forming right around the all time highs, which is 253. And to touch on a few indicators, right now it's kind of suggesting that, uh, the MACD is kind of suggesting that the, the stock is over overextended and it, it is actually backed up by these red bars right here and the lines are inverted. So we should see a little pullback happening. Currently, I don't think that the price will fall that much, but if we did, uh, but if it did, the volume shelf we are at right now is pretty thick, which means there really isn't a set support at the moment resulting it in it being easier to fall to the next support, or at least that is what I found through my experiences in the stock market, especially with technical analysis. Uh, I'm not saying that it will do that by any means, but it's always good. It's always a good thing to know the risk, the risks before investing. All right, guys, moving on to a little bit of the financials. Okay, guys, so by looking at Yahoo Finance right now, it is clear to see that their revenue has been increasing every year for the past four years. Uh, the highest increase coming in between the years of 2017 and 2018. An increase, which was an increase of 184,628, okay? However, guys, their cost of revenue keeps increasing over the years as well, along with their operating expenses, which has them working at a loss right now. And something that I found interesting, which even though it's still negative, is the net income for the years of 2018, 2019, and the TTM, which I re researched what TTM stands for. It says the trailing 12 months. So even though it's negative, it still hasn't increased, like the, no the negative number hasn't gotten larger. So, which leads me to believe that maybe they found something that they were doing wrong with their operations, uh, and now they found a way to kind of stop the bleeding in a sense, which sort of leads into the next topic. So why are they so popular right now? Well, I think it would be a huge oversight if we didn't mention the, the state of the world right now as a huge factor on why the company's stock price is moving the way it is. And who's to blame them? Guys, I do not know one single person that likes sitting in waiting rooms full of sick people just, to, just so they can go get a, a prescription. To me, it seems like you're just taking unnecessary risks when there's other options out there like Teladoc. And I can think of numerous times when I was a kid growing up and the, waking my parents up in the middle of the night because I had strep throat. I was what you would call a carrier of strep throat. It just means I got it a bunch. And at peak times I had it like five times in two months. Imagine if we had phones with apps back then that would allow you to see local registered and licensed doctors who could prescribe you the same prescription you would get if you went in person from the comfort of your own home and for a fraction of the time. Right now, I think a lot more people are realizing the benefits of these companies such as Teladoc, Livango, and, and, and other things, you know? That's why they're getting popular. And another reason why they're so popular is because of the acquisition, the announcement of the acquisition of Livango. So moving into the, into the question of the video, is Teladoc a buy? And to be honest with you guys, I don't think this is a question. I think this is maybe the easiest one I've done so far. Just looking at the trends of things, right? People don't buy pocket or handheld or point and shoot cameras anymore because their thousand dollar phone takes as good, if not better pictures than those cameras ever could. Especially the ones that we used, you know, we grew up with. People don't buy newspapers anymore because all the news and all the articles are getting pushed out online on our thousand dollar phone that we've already bought. And people don't watch the regular news anymore or as much because they're all watching my YouTube channel. So I gotta think this trend that, I mean, it's very clear. The trend of old media or old technology moving into the new media and the new phones and everything smaller, faster and better for something that is like a strep throat visit that could be 
done from the comfort of your own home without risking getting other Ill illnesses or viruses or diseases is probably going to become more popular over time. So I think regular doctor visits and checkups uh, and the yearly checkups are going to be starting mo to move onto t services such as Teladoc, you know, and, and, and moving things onto the phone is probably going to be more, is, is going to become very normal, especially with the times that we are in right now. If not right now, then when, you know? So with that being said, guys, I do think Teladoc is a buy in my eyes, uh, even though, you know, the price has run up so far. I do think in the long term, long term, this company, this this investment will probably be good in my eyes. Obviously not your guys's because you really should see a financial advisor. But guys, this is probably where I'm gonna just cut it off because I could probably talk about Teladoc and, and other online services like this uh, for, for 20 minutes. And I know you guys don't like watching the 20 minute videos. So this is where I'm going to cut it off. So guys, that is going to be it for me on this one. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.